Oi, what's the best game where you get to eat pie? What's the best game where you play a dead guy? Aye? You'll find out in DJ 247's podcast. Here, what's the best game where you swing from a rope? And what's the best game where you battle the Pope? Like I said, you will find out in this your podcast. Hello and welcome to VG 247's Best Games Ever podcast. Uh, coming to you from Britain's third summer of the year. This is the show where we like to find the best game in a very specific category that we've come up with chiefly to cause arguments. Uh, this week, we're looking for the best game that outlived its biggest rival. So we're, we're sort of slightly stretching the definition of game to game series, I guess. Uh, we have to do that, otherwise it doesn't work. There's nothing to pick. Uh, I am joined today by Sharif Saeed, James Belcliffe making an appearance long after his last one, and uh, Tom Ory, who's here like all the time. So that's right. not... Why are you orange? Hmm? Why are you orange? I said at the start because we're in Britain's third heat wave of the year. So it was a bit. It was a bit. It was a thing. A funny joke. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I've got to fix it because you you've drawn attention to didn't, it. Haven't you? Didn't like it, so I made you <laughs> made you explain yourself. There you oh, go. Fucking believable. Right. Yeah, it actually was a bit. I'm gonna. T- <laughs> it was just the blinds. We were talking the day about making this audio only, right? For, potentially. And now you do all these visual gags that, well, gags pushing it, isn't it? But <laughs> visuals. Right, before we carry on, snack check. Has everyone got snacks to... No. Right, okay, well, um, because it's hot, I've got some uh, chili cabanasi to tuck into. Nice little protein hit. I've got some uh, Hungarian-style goulash. You've been to, you've been to a local case, supermarket. Just in case I get sells package. Cheap goods, haven't you? And... Uh, for on the off chance that one of your stories makes me fall asleep, I've got a wee, got a wee kind of Rubicon mm. Raw there, which contains a naturally occurring caffeine from uh, green coffee, I believe. So it's it's a nice it's a nice gentle lift rather than the sort of the turbo charge that Monster gives you. Uh, right, okay, let's get into it then. So Sharif. What is your favorite game? What's your best game that outlived its rival? The timing of this episode is pretty nice uh, because we are getting very close to the 12th anniversary of the inception of the rivalry between the return of Elite in the form of Elite Dangerous yeah, yeah, and the return of Chris Roberts in the form of Star Citizen. Uh, the two games, uh, uh, they started their uh, crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter in 2012. They both come from renowned creators of space games. It was very hot at the time to start a crowdfunding campaign uh, by bringing back someone who people love, who made games the, the, that they grew up with or that they loved, and then they came back to say, hey, I'm doing the thing that publishers won't let me do. And so yeah. there's no way you could have predicted the trajectory of these, you know, the both of these games now that we are 12 years later. Elite Dangerous, of course, was the follow-up to Elite, a classic game that uh, I'm sure British people are very familiar with and everyone else is like, what are you talking about? Wasn't it on like a very expensive console? What was what was it on in the UK? It was on the BBC Micro originally. Was that but, an expensive console? Uh, it would have been, yeah, but it, there, there was one in like every classroom, so oh. yeah, everyone had access to one. But um not long after that it was ported to like everything okay so there was even okay. a NES version so did, did it ever come to the uh what was the was the amiga the one that, that the expensive one it or came the, to the, the amiga spectrum? yeah okay uh, spectrum uh, it was on the spectrum i'm pretty sure uh, regardless it's a space game uh, for nerds mainly space trucking really more like it uh you yeah know, uh, uh blue collar working class blah 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 uh star citizen was a not a return of an old franchise but a sort of rebirth of something that Chris uh, Roberts has done, you know, many times in the past, known space games that I feel like were much more wildly recognized, not least of which because they had Mark Hamill in them from that there, Star Wars. Uh, so you kind of, I, I feel like he had the, I'm trying to find like a really good example that people listening to this podcast would recognize. Deep Impact but Armageddon. It's that again, wasn't it? It's that, we're no, that podcast again, because mm. one of them was boring and one of them is entertaining. No, it's, this, this isn't so much about. I think the both what of them is this are, segment are, of the podcast boring and entertaining? Let's decide. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you'll get your turn. You can you can dunk on my picks. Yeah. Later. So yeah, uh, Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, both of them 
kickstarted their crowdfunding campaign around the same time. Yeah. Both yeah. they made a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and if I remember correctly, people were pretty down on uh, the Dave Graben side, the Elite Dangerous side of that, because they were like, oh, yeah, they he's, were. he's done, you know, he's, he's uh, 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 oversold things in the past and blah, blah, blah. And all this lead up to say that we're now 12 years later. Elite Dangerous is a game that you can play. It's a fully fleshed thing with a bunch of different components that you can jump into. Like, like you would any video game. It's available on a console that you can play. It's available even on last gen. It's a game. Like, it's a thing. Star Citizen, on the other hand, continues to, to rake up money. Uh, they do this thing that I love, which is the misleading uh, characterization of how much money they have raised, wherein they sell in-game ships and insurance for these ships, because these ships can be destroyed, so they're selling you insurance. And then they tally all that up and say, look how much money our game made in crowdfunding, which is like basically like you're, you're opening a, I don't know, like a hot dog stand and saying, look how much funding I'm getting. This is not funding. You are selling a product. <laughs> and then you can't just say, oh, look how much funding I'm getting. This is not funding. This is sales revenue. Star Citizen now is a sort of like this thing that is, I don't think there's any nuance in, 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 in looking at Star Citizen. It's you're either all bought in, which is for the last 12 years, you have invested so much of your money that you cannot perceive of this as anything but the best thing ever made. And you cannot have anything but justifications for why it's taking so long. And everyone else is wrong. Everyone else just doesn't see what you see, man. This, they're doing things that no one else has done, man. That's why it's taking so long. It's Kool-Aid. It's really like... Uh, I have tried Star Citizen multiple times. They do these three weekends every, yeah. I want to say, every quarter. And it's, 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 it's not even a game. It's a sort of like... Uh, I think they, even they admit that it, they, they call them modules. So you have, yeah. you have these separate modules. It's like, okay, here's the space module thing. Okay, Here's the uh, ship combat module. Here is the mining module. Here is the uh, on foot first person shooter module. Yeah. And it's like it's it's almost like uh, uh, if you've ever seen a, a, a prototype of a game where it's not really a game, and everyone is like, "Oh, when this is finished, all of these things will be combined together in a product." But now, look at the combat. It doesn't that look cool. Look at the hub area. Doesn't that look cool? And it's like, okay, yeah, that looks fine. But it's been 12 years. You can't wait 12, like all do all this work and then keep expanding and keep all this feature creep and, and keep all of this stuff. Give me a game that I can play start to finish. And they keep doing their, obviously, their single player thing that they have had been working on, I think, for like the last six years or seven years. They keep delaying that. I don't know if I'll, if I'll ever play it before like the PS6 or something comes out. I have no idea. And so my pick for this, to, to make a very long story short, is Elite Dangerous. Because Elite Dangerous, uh, if you had looked at this rivalry when it started 12 years ago, I don't think yeah. anyone would have guessed that Elite Dangerous would be the game that would release, have multiple expansions, yeah. opinions would be up and down on and everything. It just go through a game cycle that like any game would go through, like a Destiny or whatever. And then Star Citizen would still be out there in the corner, be like, we're working on it, man. Just wait, just wait. Just one more <laughs> year, man. We're doing it. We're just like, we're doing yeah. the, all this like technology that we're doing. And everyone's like, oh, are you still doing this thing? You know, it's like your yeah. friend from high school who's like doing pretty good. He's still doing mm. pretty good. And it's like, it's, yeah. are, are you, I'm, are you I'm doing so pretty good? I'm so confused uh, yeah, by this. Sh Sh Sharif, not, so to go, not to go Tom Ari on this, but. Please. Uh, <laughs> I am also confused. So for the topic of the game that outlived its biggest rival, you've brought two sort of semi-unrelated games in a similar genre that are both still going. Have I got that mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, not really. Look, what do you mean not Star really? Alone, the point is that Star Citizen isn't going. <laughs> no it never started going. Yes, it like, is. Yeah, going. Star Citizen is not a game. Like, it's, it's massively it's, going. It's, it's a fucking it's, tech it's, demo. It's, it's not. A, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's probably a one of the most yeah, successful dangerous. games released in the last decade. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a game. I'm sorry. Elite Dangerous <laughs> became, uh, left its crowdfunding stage and became a released 1.0 product and went on and had multiple expansions. You can still... Like there's still ongoing development. There's a if there's this, an ongoing storyline called best game yeah. that lived while the other game never was born. Yeah, you could right. argue that was a thing. Look, sort look, of. But how do you define viable. death? Because well, not this. <laughs> the, the, uh, because if, if death is a state of they're unbeing, then before stuff. we are born, we are dead. Right? Listen, but one is a game and one is a dream. 
Like one is it, like, uh, just trust yeah. me, bro. Just give me this money and I'll do this thing. And one is yeah. a game that you can buy. Like I think but there's a very the, clear What I think Sharif is getting at is that Elite Dangerous outlived Star Citizen's status as a, a viable product um, or, or even outlived Star Citizen's potential as a viable product. 12 years on and you're still in alpha and you're still doing all this like, hey, you can buy shit bundles and you can't fly them anywhere because there's nowhere to go um, it's it's a lot of shite and, Feels and like a Elite Dangerous but is a proper game if you want to bring it up game. in a different podcast maybe cut Sharif's bit out save it for a different <laughs> podcast and put it in and, and, and I think it's slightly misrepresentative of what you can do in Star Citizen right that you can fly around in space there is like you can fly you around in space I'm saying like you can, you can. Like the last time yes. I played Star Citizen, admittedly, was probably about five years ago. And it was, I played it last go. year. Who comes out? Uh, right, Sharif, uh, you played it last year. When I last played yes. it, there was a you know there was good bits, right? It was like a good collection of stuff. Yeah. You, there was a bit with a space station, and you could you could you could uh, launch your ship, and yep. you could dock at the space station. You yep. could go on a spacewalk. You could walk mm-hmm. around the space station and look at stuff, yep. or you could go to the hub planet. You could go to the pub, whatever. Or you could do the ship combat training, which was basically like, oh, this is Wing Commander. You know, like, but as you say, it wasn't a joined up experience and it was all very like, I don't know why anyone would pay for this because it's just like, you might as well go onto itch.io and. I just don't get it. I don't get it. It's like me going FIFA outlive red card soccer. It's like they're completely different things. Like, one is. Not completely different things, so are they? They're the same. It's a ridiculous game. We just try and get red cards. It's An stupid, old British work. man said, "Give me money to 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 re remake, rebuild the space combat trading genre," and that happened twice within months. And uh, the, 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 on paper, these projects are practically identical. But you, you know what I would Wing say, Commander, Sharif, right? is that Wing Commander, yeah. which is completely different to Elite Privateer, isn't it? Was it? Well, and, I, and, and I would argue Star Citizen is, was, has more thinking, in common with Privateer. Than, all I was thinking during that whole bit was, can I crowdfund this to end that whole section? I was like, please, can, where can I <laughs> put the money to end this? I think, r- I think, bit. I think Sharif's onto something, and I think you's are. He's not. I, I, He's I've really met. Not. Can, I, David can Braden, I pick right? holes I in the rivalry part? Really? Can, can I pick? Can I pick holes in the rivalry part? Like, well, there's obviously I know because I, I was about to them. say they were both like funded. I've spoken to David Braben about all this, right? And he didn't name check Chris Roberts in this conversation. But what he did say was, there's two ways you could do this. You could try and build an everything game that is like a space simulation and an on-the-ground simulation and an online thing and and a game that just does like, you know, a a, a full-on total immersion life sim set in the 40,000th century or whatever. Or you could go and you could just start with here's a modern update to Elite. And then you could say, right, now we're doing planets. Now you can get out of your ship on a space station. You know, now we're, now we're adding these things in gradually. And it was like, we start off with like um, a full, complete experience. And then we, we add things onto that. And we design it in such a way that you can add stuff onto that. So people aren't waiting for a 27-year dev cycle before they actually play a 1.0. Yeah, so that sounds and that, to that me is, like that he is was the difference. specifically that is... saying, it sounds like he was specifically yeah. saying that they're different products and that they're not in competition with each other, that they're doing it completely differently. Well, they are in competition, and they're saying that there's two different approaches. Well, this uh, you can't, well, you, that sounds to me like he was just is, saying that, yeah, ridiculous. they're doing what they're doing, they're doing what Star doing. There's no animosity. You can't say that Chris Roberts and David Braeburn aren't competitors in their very niche field the kickstarter started two weeks apart practically yeah like and they were people people bringing them up both in the same sentence as like the two the return of those two imagine if castlevania had a competitor and then igarachi and someone else came at the same time almost and said we're gonna do a revival of the castlevania imagine like one of them was like we're gonna do the symphony of the night style and one of them said we're gonna do the uh, the nintendo nes style you wouldn't yeah. say like these two the games are, are are different. Like yes, of course they're kind of different, but they're both being yeah. positioned as competitors, selling similar approaches to the same thing, and 
Like, I, I, well, it's, several, like it's like the competitive imagine, bit, though. Right? Like, imagine, like, imagine, imagine in the same year. <laughs> imagine. Imagine in the same the, year, right, you had two different films about asteroids, right? Yeah, we talked about that already. <laughs> but just right, the best thing, like, competitive, let's right? Let's move on. Let's, let's not get down bogged road, down right? in who crowdfunded who, right? But next to it is a Thai restaurant, right? They both compete for money because they sell food. But they're completely different things, right? Also... They're both they're still not alive completely different things, like are they? Because they're takeaways. Both alive. They're both still functional games that you, you can. You can't say two takeaways are completely different things. That's you not can say that. right. You can say there's a Thai restaurant next to a foot massage parlor, and those are two different things. But you can't say there's there's two takeaways how, that do different ty- types of cuisine. How is the Thai restaurant similar to the fish and chip shop? Other than they both sell food. Like FIFA is similar and you, to and, and a customer can only eat one meal at a time, games. so they choose. But they go, oh, I don't fancy Thai this nah. week. I fancy chess. I've, I've just shot so many holes in that this. Is, I don't know how you can keep it safe. <laughs> that is unbelievable. That is, you are basically saying, you are basically saying that KFC and McDonald's are totally different. <laughs> no, they're much more similar. That's actual two fast foods. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> You've got to understand the different food uh, establishments. I thought you'd be up on this. And both are and still going. Gotta, you know, Neither outlived the other. That's the, the as, bigger point. Is as a fat bastard, alive. right? I feel like I've got an authority on this, and I, I, I don't. I would not say that a Thai ta- I would not say that uh, an Indian takeaway and a chippy are two entirely different things. Because they, they serve the same though. people. They're quite different. They're not. Aren't they? What they the offer. Yeah, exactly. is that, imagine one of them was like, okay, you can walk into a front desk, uh, not front desk, like a reception, and someone was like, hey, yeah. can I take your order? And then you think, and the other one was like, you get a phone call from someone who said, okay, meet me at this back alley, and I have the really good shit, and then you still get handed like a brown bag with like you know chicken nuggets in it. You've got two chippies, right? And one of them, one of them is run by Italians, and the other one is run by Turkish guys, right? Do we have one to of the chippies this? does. It feels like it's going down dangerous. Ground. One of the one <laughs> of the chippy, and they're slightly different because one of the chippies does do doner meat, right? Mm. Apart from that, menus are practically identical. But in one of them, and I'll say the Italian one because I'm Italian, so this isn't problematic. You go into mm. the Italian one, and they go, "If you give us a hundred quid, we might be able to get you fish and chips in eight years." And then you go into the Turkish one and they're just like, yeah, what do you want? That's the difference, Tom. That's the fucking analogy. Not fucking fucking yeah, but one of them massage wasn't closed, parlors, whatever you were one talking about. One of them about. wasn't closed. You walked in, it was open. Right. It is yeah. now 21 minutes and we still have two pictures <laughs> That's Sharice, to get. <laughs> it's entirely Sharice. It really, really is. I just, if I that wins, I'm going to be really upset. Kept arguing. I tell you we're what, really I'm going to really test the audience. Theory. I'm going to really test the audience now and invite Tom to go next. <laughs> I hope I'll pick what Bill Cliss picked because uh, he really throw him. Right, so there's a bit of a background to this, as there often is. So uh-huh. I was, I was a, initially very much console child, played loads of like consoles in my thing. And I got big into PCs, right? So I was building PCs quite young, like... 14, whatever, <laughs> building PCs. Sorry, I'm strapping in for this. Um, and uh, I was playing all the big PC releases. Um, and then uh, Steven Spielberg got involved with a game called Medal of Honor, right? That was a big deal. Medal of Honor, Medal of Honor was a big deal. Um, and it was like built as this like almost like cross media type thing where Hollywood's involved and stuff, right? We had an um, argument earlier about whether or not it's prudent to tell me what you're picking before mm, we start recording. Yeah. And this is it's happened. I don't play by the rules. It's make happened this more you to deliberately keep your cheated. And make things more interesting. Right. So anyway, Medal of Honor was a good game, particularly on PC. It was a good game on PC. Um uh Allied Assault was a good game. Um but then a few years after Medal of Honor was like at its peak, um, another game came out that was like a direct competitor to it. So I was big, well excited for this game. Um, walked up to town. It was October mm, 20, 2003, I think. Um, surprisingly, though, it was quite a warm October. So I had shorts on. Um, so I got into town. Um, 
went to the local shop I had, which is uh, like an independent uh, game shop in town, um, handed over the cash because cards weren't such a thing then. Um, put the game in my bag, big PC game, big it's just box. Just like listening to fucking Grandpa Simpson. Um, and then he gave me the receipt, and I was big on like I must keep the receipt because I had issues with games in the past. I had to return them, right? Put it into my pocket alongside uh, my keys and my wallet. Um, did up the pockets, like keep this safe. I'm not going to lose this receipt, right? So I was walking home with this 20, 2003 PC game release that was an arrival to Medal of Honor. Um, I got home. I was like, I'm just going to go in now because uh, play my new game. I couldn't open the pocket to my shorts, <laughs> right? Couldn't open the pocket. The zip, the zip had. Uh, stuck all the way up and I was like how do I this is ridiculous I've got to get this pocket open um and I couldn't get into the pocket and my keys are in there there's no one in the house um I couldn't get in pocket was just shut I, could, I had no idea why I was trying to really trying to like force it open I thought this is ridiculous not like I was just in like side of the house trying to get my, my looked ridiculous I'm sure I was like right I'm just going to pull this apart put it apart um break into my shorts couldn't do it whatever reason it was far too tightly uh sewn together um i thought what am i going to do what am i going to do um went next door i said right i can't this is embarrassing but my neighbor was about 80 i said right um can you help me out i can't get into my shorts um (laughs) and she said all right don't worry about it uh Here's like she had like one of those little uh picks that you get to unpick stitching in clothes. It's like a little like sharp little hooky thing. Yeah. You kind of unpick the stitch. I was doing this on my shorts, I'm picking around the pocket, and it's taking forever. And it, I just wasn't ended up doing the wrong bit, and I couldn't get into the zip bit still. The pocket was still intact. So I said, Right, have you got any scissors? So I just took the scissors, went to the bathroom, took the shorts off, cut open the bottom of the pocket, got the keys out, put the shorts back on went in, um, back to the house. I started playing Call of Duty uh, on my PC. And Call of Duty went on to massively outlive uh, Medal of Honor. Mm, um, still going strong. One of the biggest game franchises of all time. Medal of Honor's had a few sort of comebacks. Nothing really... Well, I was going to say, the student right. kind of became Airborne's the master okay. on that one, didn't it? Because um, Medal of Honor tried to have a modern yeah, day... I mean, Infinity survival. World was set up by people that worked on... Uh, uh, Medal of Honor. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really good, uh, I mean, debatable whether Call of Duty is always brilliant, but it's stuck around. Some of the games are very good, some not so good. Um, and yeah. What was the last go. good uh, Call of Duty game, Sharif? The last good one? Yeah. Uh, the Modern Warfare reboot, the 2019 Modern Warfare. Nah, it'd be, it'd be before that, wouldn't it? What do you mean? The, the well, that was better than all the shite ones. But I mean, the last like proper good one. The the, the Modern Black Warfare 2019. No, fuck the Black Ops games. I don't care. Uh, Black Ops. It's the, it's, it's the, it's the Modern Warfare 2019. It's the Modern Warfare 2019 reboot. It has transformed Call of Duty in a way that no other Call of Duty has. Before. Right. I'm not asking him anything again. Bill Cliff, what was the best? What was the last good Call of Duty game? How was um, that not an answer? I, I, I like, picked the game that I liked. Do you not like any of the tra- of any of the Treyarch Black Ops games? No. What do you mean no? Listen. I don't. I don't like the Treyarch games. I don't think they feel what about good. The one that's I'm sorry. Yeah, the, last, the last proper great Black Call of Duty, I would argue, is three. Modern Warfare three was a bit of a mess. I don't care about Treyarch games at all. The space one was good. Infinite Warfare. Good. Yeah, actually, you know that what? Infinite good. Warfare was great. Very really misunderstood. Unfairly yeah. maligned. Yeah. Is that the one that was sick of the Kit Harrington? In two scenes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Had Lewis Hamilton in it as a good guy. Yeah, and they were, they were doing that. We've talked about Infinite Warfare on the podcast before, yeah. I think, because we all mm. rate it, but the audience absolutely hated it. But yeah. let's move on. Um, that was lovely, Tom. Thank you. Do you mean Thanks. it was lovely? Bill deliberately Cliff. cheated and stole my pick. What are you talking about? Yeah, that was... I haven't said, I haven't said that, though, Bill Cliff, right? What do you mean? In fairness to Tom... Mm, is... in. In fairness to Tom, A, you mean, didn't know him. B, you did send me about seven picks. You've got, you had a pretty good one to start with, though. What do you want to go for? Oh, can't even remember which one I started with because my, my mind went in several different directions. I think the my first yeah. inclination was to go for 
Fallout 4, Star Wars Battlefront, and then declare Kane and Lynch 2 the winner just to sort of <laughs> in a sort of vain attempt to curry favor with the commenters and just do a video gamer joke again. Uh, but I think we need to move yeah. past that. Yeah. I'm literally going to go into the messages and see what, because I can't, I can't remember what's well, Me and Tom are never going to move past that. So My first one was, I was thinking about doing Guitar Hero versus Rock Band and Rock it's Band. Like the fucking goulash. What, what are you talking about peas for while I'm talking, Jim? <laughs> no, yeah, come, come on, on do your goulash bit. Don't get the goulash out and then just and shy away from it while I'm talking. Come on. I was just saying I need a protein hit because this is this is 29 minutes now. Why are you waving goulash at the camera while I'm talking? This one's gone off gone off the rails more than ever before. I'm just free associating now. This is this is this is truly a disaster. You ever heard that anecdote about uh, all the Hollywood stars going to Sean Connery's house for goulash, and he's all like, "Do you like the goulash?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon he got it from Little? <laughs> Do you like the goulash? One pound twenty nine on a special. <laughs> Any- <laughs> oh, God. Like, carry this, on. This well, is the worst one ever. Like genuinely. Like anyway, we've done some bad ones in the past, but this is just 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 the worst one ever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll try and do Rock Band and Guitar Hero because Rock Band is kind of technically still going in Fortnite and stuff. Uh, well, I didn't want to do this one. I'm not going to do this one because it's rubbish. Because Guitar Hero is still going because of Clone Hero. There's this massive community of people that play a, a modded version of Guitar Hero every single day. It's like more popular now than it's ever been. And you can buy the old guitars for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So if any, but I was waiting for somebody to choose Rock Band versus Guitar Hero, because then I could have jumped on you. I could have told you about Clone Hero because you wouldn't have researched that and you would have been wrong. It would have been a terrible choice. So that one's terrible. No, I think it, it would have been a terrible choice because they're both dead. None yeah. of these games exist anymore. Anyway, yours are both still going, so let's keep going with the uh, <laughs> let's go let's keep going with the uh, with the pick, shall we? Next, I thought I wanted to troll Tom Ari because he's trolled me massively today. Anyway, I was going to say that Forza smashed Project Gotham Racing out of the way because as Microsoft's yeah, flagship true. racing game. But then oh, I thought that true. that would lead me down a bad faith argument where I'd have to try and contend that Gran Turismo and Drive Club were somehow the two. PlayStation version is that, and nobody cares about Drive Club. Uh, nobody gives I, a fuck. Yeah, I it's like one game. nobody gives a fuck. I was at, I was at a summer fair over the over the summer here, and there's a there's a, a, a second hand shop in town where I live, and I saw a young lad, must have been ten, uh, coming out of it with a brand new copy on PS4. Well, not brand new, pre owned copy of Drive Club on PS4 in his hand, and I was like, yeah. kiddo, you done goofed there. Whoever has let you buy that is uh, is Adam. It's, it's, it's a good game. It's a good game. It's a good game. It's a fun game. Can you even play it? Can you play it's... it still? Yeah, you can. Yeah, some of, maybe, some of the functionalities may be shut down, but you can still play a lot of it. Yeah, all the, the tiles at the fr- on the front of the the menu were like it would show you scores from your draft club mates or whatever. All of these are empty now and error out, but you can play the game. A lot of shite. Uh, uh, the best thing about that game was the weather. The rain was good. Yes, the rain was good. Yeah. Good rain, yeah. Rest of yep. it, shite. Yeah. But anyway, I didn't want to do that oh, one either. Go. So I, yeah. I, I actually did want to do Call of Duty vs. Medal, Medal of Honor, specifically because of the way that the transition between the World War II mm. shooter and the modern shooter, Call of Duty perfectly just saw where the market was going, smashed it out with Call of Duty 4, and then with, and then just, just to flex on everybody else, styled it out with the best World War II uh, game in World of War and then changed the game again with Modern Warfare 2 which for youngins out there we used to have to like click the right stick to aim and hold L1 and press square and then release it and stuff before Modern Warfare 2 like completely solidified the controller uh, mapping for everything uh, games are just completely different and it's just a, a massive epochal shift I totally agree actually I think that Call is of Duty doesn't get enough credit for the standardization of controls like that just incredible and that's why that was my pick so I don't know what yeah. you want to make in, as a judge, judging call here Bill Cliff do you want to do GTA versus Saints Row no because Saints Row sucks 
and it was Nick. So Saints Row, I would have jumped on well, anybody that's, that's that tried to do that one because Saints Row isn't a isn't a competitor to, to GTA. Nobody's going picking between it's a terrible GTA and competitor Saints Row. To GTA. But there yeah. are people out there who swear that it's better. They're idiots, but there are people out there who do. Well, it's better in certain ways, I would say. It's not. It's not better yes, in any ways. I'm not having I, that. <laughs> in what ways oh. is it better? It's better at being shite. What about Driver and GTA? Is that the one? Does that work? Driver, yeah. Maybe. That Driver works. And GTA. Spillcliff, do that. How about I do GTA <laughs> yeah. 3 and uh, The Getaway or something? The Getaway works, because that is their, like... GTA. All right, I've picked GTA three and uh, and then the getaway and GTA is still going. The getaway is not still going. The studio is closed now, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Sharif's uh, games were both going and Tom cheated, so I'll just uh, just leave that one with you, Jim. Yeah, I only yeah. cheated in your mind because I haven't broken any rules. <laughs> yeah, and I would say that uh, the getaway <laughs> did the classic Sony thing of maybe uh, trying uh, to achieve total realism in a GTA style game, and and in the pursuit of of like total immersive realism, made something that was boring as fuck. Uh, whereas GTA isn't boring as fuck. So there we go. Um, I think um, I've got to pick something now, so I'm just going to do that really quickly. <laughs> Uh, Bill Cliff wins because the getaway is shite and GTA is incredible. Hey, listen, we workshop that in real time. The audience has never seen that before. They're going to love it. Uh, I'm fine with it. I'm okay. I'm just glad Sharif didn't win. <laughs> well, both of Sharif's are still going. Um, oh, one is a game and right one is a... D- d- you let him talk for about 10 minutes yeah. on this and yeah. you should have just gone immediately, bam, stop it. Stop because it, I was Sharif. interested in what Sharif had to say. Which is I was fucking really rare worried that, that we were so deep in the bad say. pick era that we were just going to... That was going to be have. It. I was really worried. They have a... What do you mean the you bad know, pick? You, you know what they call? You know what they call the, the, the convention, the Star Citizen. You know what they call the Star Citizen convention? There's a convention. Yeah, they, 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 they have a Star Citizen convention for fans. Starcon, Citizen Con. <laughs> if that's not, if that's not the most telling self-report, I can't. I'm done. Like I, I've said everything. Yeah. Citizen Con, Jim. Yeah. Citizen Con. Hey, Citizen. They've been um, going for like six years or whatever. Honestly, where they gather all do, those people, the true just believers. Do a podcast. Where we have the topic that fits, and just put this seg- section in. It'd be funny <laughs> for people that actually follow this. Every I am. Um, I think I stand by my picks. I think they were the best out of all y'all. I mean, you, you're welcome to think that, Tom. Mm. Uh, you stole that off Billcliff. Didn't know. Did you, you cheated because you didn't tell me what you were picking beforehand, and then we had this. Yeah, but you never told me until we were literally recording. Yeah. basically minutes to rec- recording how was i meant to come up with something new at that point you should have messaged you should have gone this morning 9 a.m please tell me your pick and i'd have told you it's I been a standing I rule for years. years years this has it's, been the rule when we first started, started this podcast it was like to recording. in fact i believe it was one of your rules you have to tell jim what you're picking first so there's no uh and then right, uh, find me that message and i'll you uh, you I'll broke your down. own rule and fell afoul of it i'm afraid you are hoist by your own petards. That's a classic, classic definition, isn't it? Um, and uh, and Bill Cliff wins because I came up with his uh, his pitch, and it's the best one. Thank you very much for listening, um, and uh, and we apologise. Yeah, nobody's made it this far. Uh, that was a nightmare. That's funny. People, people have stopped in the first ten minutes. Guaranteed. So many people have quit. And like, what this is point. this? It's Especially Tom Ory's little angry. fucking fans just very angry about this game that doesn't fit the brief (laughs) that's what people are thinking and they're like where's he going with this maybe he's going to do a bit of a swerve and go off and pick something really clever no oh yeah i apologize (laughs) i apologize to the tom was robbed guy I apologise to yeah. the person whose avatar <laughs> is the Pepe Tom was dropped. There is one guy, and he's just raging constantly. Because Tom never. I apologise to my fans. <laughs> Even I when Tom does to, win, that well, guy's raging. You weren't you weren't respectful enough of Tom. Um, all right, okay. Well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to listen to the extended version of this podcast, though at this point, God knows why you'd want to. Uh, you can go to vg 247com and click the support us page. It's in the hamburger menu if you're on more. Mobile. And uh, for how much is it, Tom? Two ninety nine a month. Yeah. You get uh, ad free access to VG twenty four seven, guilt free, and uh, you get the extended version of this podcast every Are week. Hamburgers comparable to fish and chips? You want sorry? Hamburgers are they yeah. comparable to fish and chips? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. I'm just saying it's the same. Uh, 
sort of same ballpark, but not, isn't it? But you th- not comparable to Thai food? Depends on the Thai food. Like if it's a sort of like pop up sort of delivery sort of, you know, secret kitchen job where people are literally just getting it because they're hungry, you know? That I, w- I would separate it from a proper Thai restaurant. <laughs> just so, I just, at the corner of my eye, I just saw Bill Cliff, like, like losing control of his own face. All right, okay, let's, let's go. If you are not a paid subscriber, unfortunately, this is where we have to love you and leave you, but if you are a subscriber, if you are a bestie, which is what we call them, this is what you're paying for. Try to mute that before I burped. <laughs> and it didn't work. Wonderful podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put that in. We'll get complaints.